What's going on guys? My name is Jake. You're watching Meat Sauce. Guys, today we're going to be talking about the Galaxy Note 10 Plus. The Note 10 Plus is my latest device. If you have been following my channel for a little while, I actually made a video about the Note 8. That's the phone that I've upgraded from. Now, I upgraded from the Note 8 at the end of February this year. So I've been using the Note 10 for a good, what, couple of months now? And I did so knowing that the S20 was just due for a release. I think it was within like a week of when I purchased the Note 10. Now with the S20 being released, means that the Note 20 series or the following Note series would be released within about six months from there again. So why didn't I wait for the Note 20? Or why didn't I just get the S20? Well, let me tell you all about it. <laughs> Guys, let's get into the specs about this device right here. This, this old, old mate, this guy. This particular device is the Xenos 9825 4G variant. It's the international variant. It has 256 gigabytes of local storage as well as 12 gigabytes of RAM. And it is all powered by a 4300 milliamp battery cell. With that being said, let's get into some reasons why I like it and some reasons why I don't. Starting off with the good, number one, the battery life and the char the battery life and the charging. God damn. Like I said before, this phone is equipped with a 4300 milliamp battery, which is pretty big, especially when you compare it to the Note 8's measly 3400 milliamp battery. It's actually a pretty substantial increase by a thousand milliamp hours. This is probably one of the things that made me want to upgrade from the Note 8 in the first place. Unfortunately, the Note 8 was obviously released after the Note 7, and the Note 7 was pretty renowned for the battery exploding issues that it had. This forced Samsung to basically release their phone with a smaller size battery to give a perception for the public that it is safer. Now, this wasn't the case at all. I mean, every battery cell is just as dangerous as the next. What makes them unsafe is when there are contaminants within the battery cell, which was the case with a small case or a small portion of some of the Note 7 devices, but Samsung couldn't be entirely sure which ones were affected and which ones weren't, so that's why they recalled just all of them, because it's a pretty big safety risk. So that was the issue. There was a small contaminant in some of the batteries and that caused a short within the battery and basically caused a chemical reaction or an explosion. Well, three generations later, everyone's calmed their tits and we've got bigger batteries again. Woo! This phone on a full charge will get me all day battery life. Normally ending the day with anywhere between 10 and 20%, more towards the center, like 13, 14, 15%. And that's with heavy usage. That's watching video all day. That's making phone calls. That's texting and reading web articles and all that other that you may do on your phone. Now, granted, I don't really game on my phone. And if you do, your mileage may vary a little bit. You probably will drain your entire battery if you're doing some heavy gaming, light to middle gaming, you're still gonna have the same experience as what I do. But that's where things get even better. Samsung has included a 25 watt charger in the box for the Note 10 series. Apple, take a hint. It's a good thing, bro. With the 25 watt charger, you'll get a zero to 100 charge in just a little bit over an hour, give or take, depending on your conditions. Or you'll get about 67%, give or take, in about 30 minutes. To get even crazier, I went ahead and purchased the separate 45 watt charger. It's the official one from Samsung. The 45 watt charger achieves zero to 100 in around 50 minutes or so, give or take, conditions, blah, 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 or around about 70, 73% in about 30 minutes. You can halve that again, you get roughly like 35-ish percent in 15 minutes. Now, I don't really have to explain this, but that is, it's great. For the many, many times that you may forget to charge your phone at a certain period, let's say you're about to go out, you're about to go to work, you're about to go to the pub, whatever, having that quick charge 
is super, super handy. Now, obviously there's not a huge difference between the 25 watt and the 45 watt charger. To be honest, you could probably just stick with the 25 watt charger. I wouldn't really worry about going out. You're gonna get still really good results with the 25 watt charger. I got the 45 watt because I want the best. <laughs> That's about it. If you couldn't tell, I'm pretty stoked on the battery. Now, one thing to note is that only the Note 10 Plus or Note 10 Plus 5G variants of the phone can use the 45 watt charging. But all the phones use a standard called USB-C PD PPS, which is power delivery programmable power supply. I know it's it's weird, but it's part of the power delivery 3.0 standard. It's basically like safer. In. That means to be able to get that 45 watt charger charging, you need to buy a power delivery charger that has that capability. So the Nintendo Switch's power delivery cable is like 30 something watts, but that isn't PPS. PPS, so you're only gonna, you, you won't achieve full 30 watts. It'll still be fast, but it won't be as fast as the 45 watt with PPS. So, if you want the extra fast charging, I would suggest just go out and buy the Samsung charger. Otherwise, just make sure you do your research and ensure that the charger and the cable you're using have those standards. If they don't, you're not gonna get the charging results that you expect. I hope that makes sense. All right, finally, let's move on to number two. That would be performance. This thing is an absolute beast. And basically it doesn't hit carp at anything that you throw at it. Number three um, is the display. The display is sharp, bright, and punchy as in terms of the colors, I mean. Even though it is a beautiful display, this is probably one thing that may make you want to wait for the Note 20. This phone only has a 60 Hertz display, which means it can only display 60 frames per second. The S series phones that have just come out have 120 hertz displays, and that means the Note 20 series is most certainly also going to have the same 120 hertz display. Now mind you, even though this is capped at 60 hertz, pretty much like 80% of the things you're gonna be doing on this phone are capped at 60 frames per second anyway, or even less, 30 frames per second. Almost all the videos that you watch are either normally on YouTube at 30 frames per second, sometimes you hit 60 frames per second, which is the same um, refresh rate as this phone. Most movies that you watch are actually capped at 24 frames per second, so you don't even notice the difference there. I could be wrong here, but the only rule two things that you going to miss on this is like the UI responsiveness so the UI will move at 120 frames per second which will make everything feel and look smoother as well as some games they may have an uncapped frame rate even if a game has an uncapped frame rate of above 60 frames per second you need your phone to be powerful enough to run those games at those speeds so you might get 70 you might get 80 you might get 93 you might get 120 depends on the complexity of the game. Back to this screen, it's absolutely stunning. What else can I say? It's probably one of the best HDR experiences that you're gonna get on a screen this size. I mean, unless you wanna go pay a few grand or more for a top of the line OLED TV that has proper real HDR. By the way, HDR is only real um, when it goes to like 500 nits plus. Even then, like 1,000 nits is probably where you're at. That's the, that's the good shit right there. Anything below 500 nits, just basically don't even call that real HDR. The Note 10 has a peak brightness of 1,308 nits. So that doesn't mean it's always going to be at that peak brightness, but if you're watching HDR content with your brightness slider turned all the way up, so they'll be at 1,300 nits which is beautiful, it's bright. That's the shit that lights your face up in colors at night. And if you're wondering, as for the hole punch, it doesn't really bother me, to be honest. You generally just forget that it's even there. Most apps, especially video apps, just generally block it out with a black bar. Even then you can zoom it in, like zoom the video up to take the entire screen up and you still forget that the hole punch is even there in the first place. It's better than a notch, in my opinion. To be completely, just brutally honest, it's better than a notch. And I'm, just, I'm not picking at iPhones there, just heaps of phones have notches, and this, this is a better solution than a notch, in my opinion. Anywho, moving on to the number four. That is the cameras. This phone takes exceptional photos and videos. The photos are sharp, high resolution, 
and have Samsung's trademark punchy as fuck colors, <laughs> basically. It's their post-processing, their colors always just real punchy in every one uh, Samsung's photos compared to competitors. Speaking of competitors, I'm not really gonna bother with comparing this phone to other devices. You can find that if you just search it up online. I just want you to know that if you buy this phone, the photos that you're gonna take, you're gonna be happy with in pretty much all lighting conditions. Between the standard, the 2X telephoto and the ultra wide cameras on the back, as well as the single camera on the front, you'll get amazing shots day or night. As for video recording, it does everything that like every other bloody phone does these days. It does 4K, 60, uh, it can do ultra slow motion of 240 at I'm pretty sure at 1080p, or even more impressively, it can do 960 freaking frames a second in like an ultra slow motion video mode. One of my new favorite features within these cameras is something called Super Steady. It's basically a new stabilization feature that's done electronically within the camera app. The only downfall of the feature is that it's only available in full HD or 1080p video recording. It's not available in 4K video. Now there is still image stabilization in 4K video. Don't get me wrong, it's just not the super stabilization that you get in 1080p. And as for the ultra slow motion video, it's super cool and super impressive. It takes a little bit of skill and practice to get used to the time that you need to start recording because it won't, you, it's not like normal slow motion where you can just record an infinite amount of time and just slow-mo whatever you hell you want. Moving on, number six, uh, the UI. Now the Note 10 runs on Android 10 which is pretty much the latest. Android 11 is due to come out soon, but Android 10, Android 10 is the latest stable release of Android. And it runs on top, or under I should say, Samsung's One UI version two skin. One UI has made some massive leaps compared to the old UI, whatever the hell it was called, since um, the older Samsung phones. One UI offers plenty of customization, including like themes and all that, that you can get from the Samsung store. They are not quite as robust in terms of customization compared to something like OnePlus's Oxygen OS, but it's still is customizable and that's pretty good for some people. I've seen a lot of people with different themes on their Samsung phones and that's cool that you can do that. I'm pretty sure I said this in the Note 8 video, the way that I can normally tell of whether or not I like a phone's UI or its usability is whether or not I feel the need to root the device, which means getting access to the phone's core operating system and files and installing new custom firmware and software to gain features that you feel like you should have on your phone. And with this Note 10, lo and behold, I haven't felt the need to. I've had it for a good few months now and I have not felt the need to gain root access to the phone whatsoever, which is cool. Good work. Um, another quick one to note, number six. Shit, I think I said number six before. The last one was number five. This one's number six. And that's the design. This phone is a beautiful. I personally prefer the more squared off look of the Note series phones. Some people prefer the more rounded pebble look of the S series. I prefer the more square, but that's just my personal preference. What I really love about this particular phone is the back glass, which is covered up by D-Brand skin at the moment. Not an affiliate, just they're pretty cool. This is the Aura Glow model. You can actually kind of see it through the little holes there. It's, it's pretty, it's real pretty and I like it, but you know, I prefer to keep my entire phone covered up because just for resale value, I don't like scratches on my phone. So I like this one and so do you. Moving on, we're nearly done. Hang in there guys, expandable storage. Now this is one feature, please Samsung, please brah, brah, brah. Do not let go of expandable storage. Even though this phone has 256 gigabytes of storage, which is huge, the fact that I can add a 400 gigabyte micro SD card, you can you can get one terabyte if you want to. I don't, you don't really need to, but if you got the money, go get one. I have effectively 600 odd gigabytes of usable storage on this entire phone, which is nuts, absolutely nuts. The eighth, oh, that is eight, the eighth thing that I do enjoy about this phone is the S Pen. It's probably one of the biggest reasons why I've stuck with the Note series to begin with. It is perfect for taking quick notes, hence the name. I can see business people using it for that reason. But the reason I enjoy it is because for its drawing capabilities, I don't always 
drawer, but it is super handy when I have it there. I do like to have the odd scribble here and there. Here's a picture, yeah, here's another one. It's just handy to have. And like, it's actually saved my ass a couple of times with like signing documents, like my timesheets and all that other boring stuff that you do at work. With this thing, you can just sign it and email it. All those, see all those steps that just disappeared? Super cool. I like the accuracy. The accuracy on the pen is good. Now the S Pen has been in fact upgraded since the Note 8 series. It started with the Note 9 series where they put a little battery in there and actually connects to your phone via Bluetooth. The only real upgrade there is that you can take the pen away from the device and use the little clicky button on there as like a shutter button for when you're taking photos. That's really the only advantage there. It does in fact have more pressure points like 4,000 pressure points and all this and that compared to the old one. But to be completely honest, I don't really know the difference when it comes to drawing. Maybe a more artistic person out there does notice the difference, but for me, it's essentially exactly the same. I can draw the same that I drew on my Note 8 as I can on the Note 10. That's about it for the things that I do like. Let's talk about the things that I don't like. And for me, that's only really one thing, but it's a big thing. The fingerprint sensor sucks. It sucks so hard. This single feature is probably this phone's greatest downfall. It works sometimes, it doesn't work most of the time. Essentially, it happens enough times to become like a complete botherance that you don't even use the fingerprint sensor anymore. Especially when you are using like um, cases and screen protectors. You And if you're like me, you're gonna end up just using a pattern unlock or a pin unlock. I know that many other people that I know who have these ultrasonic fingerprint sensors end up just doing the same thing because it's just, it barely works. It's like, what, what's the point? And this isn't something that we're really used to in 2020 or in 2019, even when this phone was released. As for the 20 series um, Samsung devices, apparently it has got much better, but it is still not perfect. I personally wish that Samsung had just gone with the uh, image-based underscreen fingerprint sensors like the OnePlus devices and maybe some other phones that you've used. Samsung uses the ultrasonic which is supposedly more um, secure and all this and that but it's a lot less reliable. I just wish they would just use the image based ones. Now me personally I have got around this issue by using an Android feature that's called Smart Unlock which basically you can assign a Bluetooth device that you trust, which when it is connected with your device, your device stays unlocked. So in my case, I use my smart, um, smartwatch. So whenever my phone is in, within range of my watch, it stays unlocked, which is good as long as you don't leave your phone somewhere that you don't want it to be looked at. So a good example is that you might be at the pub with your mates and you leave your phone on the table while you go to the bar and grab a drink. You better trust your mates that they're not gonna grab your phone and put some weird shit up on your social media. That's all I gotta say. But that's basically about it for the things that I do not like. Um, it's really big one though, in my opinion, and that could persuade you to maybe not even get this device. It's And the only real one thing that I have to mention, you probably already know about, and I'm so sick of hearing about it, and I'm sick of talking about it. But one thing that might bother you that doesn't really bother me is the fact that it doesn't have an AUX port or a headphone jack. It doesn't bother me because everything that I use audio wise is Bluetooth these days. I've only really hit one issue recently where I was like, oh man, I want to listen to this music, but I didn't have any Bluetooth headphones, but there was an AUX port around and I didn't. <sighs> you get the gist, but it wasn't that big of a deal. I got over it. I survived. Next day happened still. Okay. What about the conclusion? Let us conclude. To conclude this conversation, that's essentially everything that you probably need to know about this phone. That's basically everything that I like and don't like about this phone. Should you buy the Galaxy Note 10 Plus? Should you buy the Note 8? Should you buy the Note 10? Should you wait for the Series 20 devices? So many questions, so little time. First of all, unless you're on a particularly tight budget, I wouldn't recommend the Note 8 in 2020. It's still a good phone, don't get me wrong. I just probably wouldn't recommend it in 2020. You're probably gonna to struggle to find one brand new and most of the ones that I use are probably gonna be in a really shit condition. They're gonna be old and they're gonna be like pretty well used by now. 
The Galaxy Note 9 is a fantastic device. I know I didn't really speak about it a whole lot, but it is essentially the same as the Note 8, just with all the things that were wrong with the Note 8 affixed in the Note 9. So it includes, still includes a headphone jack and it has better battery life to boot. But this is where the question gets more difficult. Should you get the Note 9 or the Note 10? There's only really a few things that you're sacrificing if you get the Note 9 instead of the 10. Uh, one of those is performance gains, albeit a bit slight. The full screen display, but you might not like the, the hole punch. And a larger and faster charging battery. If anything, I would say the one main advantage that the Note 9 has over the Note 10 is its older style fingerprint sensor, the ones on the back that you just touch. Far more reliable, basically works every time. It is a perfected technology that does not disappoint. But that's where it kind of gets interesting. It becomes um, more of a question of the price point. Now, you can pick up a brand new Galaxy Note 9 for around about 900 Australian dollars. I think it's like 700 USD, give or take. Or you could pick up a used one for between five and $700, depending on its uh, condition. If you were to pick up a Galaxy Note 10 Plus 4G, brand new, it would set you back between $13 and $1,500 depending on the deal that you find. However, you can pick up a pretty well good condition uh, one of these used for about $900 to $1,100 Australian dollars. Now, I picked up my device for $1,100. That's why I used that price. And it was about three months old, I think even less than that. Um, perfect condition, everything included. It was just a good deal. It was a good price. And with the phone at this slightly higher price than a brand new Note 9, I was happy just to pay the extra couple hundred bucks and get the larger battery and the faster charging. Those two things were very important for me. Oh my God, Jerry. The next question, Note 20 or Note 10? Bah! Well, again, the biggest thing to consider is when the Note 20 comes out, you're not gonna be able to buy a secondhand one and it's probably gonna cost at least 1500 Australian dollars and that's probably just going to be for the bare minimum model and heck if you have that kind of money just sitting around and you want the best of the best then yeah get the Note 20 Plus or whatever the hell it's called Note 20 Ultra whatever they want to call it get that one however if you don't have that money and you don't want to wait and you still want a really good phone I would strongly suggest just get the Note 10 Plus and besides I'm pretty sure you're watching this video because you don't want to get the Note 20 and as always my suggestion or my my advice when it comes to buying a new phone or your, your next phone say is buy a previous gen if you can get a good deal you can get a new previous gen phone for a lot cheaper than what the current gen is and they're still really good phones guys or better yet buy one if the condition suits you buy one used just like I did because there are so many people out there that just want to get the latest and the greatest all the time and they just buy a new phone and then a few months later they get sell it and give it to someone else. That's the kind of phone that you want. That's the phone where you're gonna get a good price and it's gonna be nicer to the environment. It's just, it, it, it makes sense. As long as the condition suits your preference, get a used phone. You'll get a better price, a better deal, you'll have a good time. As for the Note 20, um, realistically, the only features that you're likely to miss out on, are like there's gonna be a 120 hertz display that I was talking about before. You'll probably have a slightly larger battery again, hopefully around the 5,000 milliamp hour range, and you'll probably again have an even faster charger. You have like better cameras with 100 time zoom and everything like that just like the s20 series but is it really that much better i don't think so at the end of the day guys if you buy the note 10 plus i know for a fact that you're going to like it i loved it i do love it this has probably been one of the only phones that i've ever purchased in my life and thought this is worth the money that i paid the note 8 was an excellent phone but the battery life was kind of the Note 10 is an excellent phone and the battery is really good. Anywho, brings us to the end of the video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments below if you have the Note 10, what you think of it, or if you're thinking of buying one, if you have any questions, if there's something I might have missed in this video, chuck it down there, chuck in the comments below. I'll try my best to get back to you and uh, leave, a, leave a like or even a dislike if you want, you know. Either way, even hit that subscribe button. If you're an absolute mad dog from way back, hit that subscribe button. Assault it, abuse it, make it yours. Anyway guys, thanks for watching. Peace, bye bye.